happen? Uh oh. Boy, don't knock my laptop down. Okay, I guess I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna mute everybody, but if you guys have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and just ask it. Um, if you ask in the chat, I will get to it, but I may not see it right away. Can everybody see my screen? Thumbs up. Good, cool. All right, so we are here to talk about commissions, which is the replacement for green sheets. They are actually a lot easier to do than green sheets. Um, and I am just going to make the assumption that everybody knows how to put a contact into command and has a contact in command. Um, so I'm just going to skip over putting a contact in, um, but I will start with starting the opportunity. Um, so if you just need to start an opportunity, go to the left-hand side of your screen with a little handshake icon. Open that up. Move the faces out of the way, and maybe you can create an opportunity. Go. I'm sure most of you already know how to do this. Just can go for it quick. You can pick the opportunity type here, whether this is a listing, buyer, landlord, or tenant that you are representing. Let's just do a listing. Um, pick a client who is one of your contacts, and it will automatically pop up. I will go with photo wagons. and change the name of the opportunity. Here, you can put anything you want. It defaults to client name dash opportunity type. So photo baggins dash listing, I just added the Shire. If you do have a co-seller or a co-buyer, you can add them here. Um, you do the same thing, just search for them, but they do need to be a contact in your system. Um, and the only other thing you really need to enter when you are starting opportunity is the commission rate. And I'll just default with 2.5 because that's the standard in our area. And we are going to create. Anyways, um, so first thing you want to do always when you create an opportunity is to add the property address here in the opportunity details section. So this will be blank. Adonis, are you writing on my screen. Um, sorry, give me up for Sorry. Me. I didn't know I could do that on your screen. I thought it was just on my screen. Continue. I don't know. You did it on my screen. I don't know if everybody else saw it too. That's funny. All right, go ahead. Anyways, you want to add the property address here. And you're just going to search for an address and it will put it in for you. Let's just do that's one of my old addresses. Let's just put that in. And if there's, of course, a unit number or an apartment number, just put that in manually down there. Save that. And it won't actually let you submit a commission request unless you added the property address in here. So you're going to make sure you want to do that or it will give you an error later. So everybody knows about the documents section. Um, to the right of the documents tab is where you're going to start the commission request. Sam, yes. so 
this is uh, for uh, the listing. If you have a buyer, uh, then which property address will go? It's the property address that's being um, bought okay. by, by your clients. Okay, thanks. Um, so the first step here is to go to this offers tab. As you can see, commissions, it won't let you click it until you build out the offers tab. Hello? No? Okay. So we're going to go to the offers tab and there is nothing here right now. So we're going to need to add a new offer. It tells you to name the offer. I'm just going to leave it as initial offer, but you can change this to anything you'd like. And we're going to create an offer. From there, we're going to do a four different stages, offer details, parties, terms, and then agent analysis. It starts you here in offer details. And all it asks for here is the offer date and the closing date. So we can say the offer date, it was made today. And then the closing date, maybe December 15th. And this closing date is going to pull um, into the system. So this is the closing date that we're, we're generally going to use. Um, so you want it to be as accurate as possible. So once you're done entering the closing and offer dates, just click on the parties button and it'll automatically bring you to the next section. And it's just asking for the buyer, seller, um, and then their agents. So it automatically put in my client's information here from his contact info. So photo baggins and photo at baggins. Had I put more information in his, in his um, contact card, it would have popped up here as well. Um, and it put in myself as the agent for the seller. And then I just need to add in whoever the buyer is. So the buyer for this can be A. Um, you can add their email, their phone number. Um, that's not required, just the name is required and the associate's name, which is who is the agent who is representing that buyer in this case. Um, so the agent can be okay. and again, you can add their contact information here, email, phone number, although the system doesn't require it. You can also check off boxes, whether they're pre-approved or they're pre-qualified, um, because you'll be able to show this information later to your, uh, to your client. So once you're done with that, you can click on terms. And it's basically just asking you about the finances for the deal. So it asks you how much cash they're putting down, um, if any. And you can do, so we'll just say maybe they're putting down 50,000 total in cash. And then they're financing 450. And so the sales price is 500. So you just have to put in the cash and finance amount and then it'll total up to whatever the sales price should be for the property. Then the next part is the earnest amount. Um, that's normally 1%. Um, so I can put that here. Um, the earnest amount will also be included in this cash section. Um, so it will be in addition to, so this 5,000 is part of this $50,000. Um, I know that confuses some people. Um, the earnest amount would be um, what's being held maybe by one of the brokerages or our brokerage. Um, so we'll say it's 5,000. The next part is option fee, termination options, seller costs. Um, a lot of the stuff we don't really do in our area, um, but you, if you do have, have you know, an option fee or termination option, you can put these in. These don't impact the commission requests, but they are something you may want to show um, your buyer or your seller um, and just kind of have it all in one place for them. So I'm just going to leave this blank. Don't need to fill that out. And then we're going to go to the last part, which is agent analysis, which again, there's not really anything that you have to do here. Um, this is where you can put the pros and the cons of this particular offer for your client. Um, 
you can just put a quick summary of it or, or the details of this offer. Um, and that way, when you're presenting this offer to your client, you have everything kind of written down for them to see. Um, and when you're done with that, you click save. And then you will have one offer waiting here. You can see the name of the buyer, the name of the agent, whether you checked off they were you know, pre-qualified, pre-approved, and some of the financial information is down here. You can add as many offers as you want. You know, this is your listing. Maybe you got three or four different offers in and you want to be able to compare those and show those to your, uh, to your seller so that you guys can decide on which one is the one that they want to go with. So you can add another offer, as many as you want, and compare them all here. Once you have an accepted offer and your seller has picked one, you will click the accept button. And once you do, the commissions tab will light up and you'll be able to click into it and continue. So the commissions uh, is really kind of a combination of offers and the commissions tab. So now I can go to commissions now that I've accepted an offer. And so the first section over here is the general information section. And you can go ahead and click on edit general information. And it pulled information from the offer. So it pulled the sales price, uh, pulled our commission percent and gave us the amount of commission that we're receiving um, and the units. It also pulled the close date. The only thing it doesn't have is the contract date and you can go ahead and just add that in yourself. Uh, whenever contracts are being signed, maybe they're being signed on election day. And then you're going to save the changes. Um, again, if there's any change in sales price from when that offer was accepted um, to when you're doing the commission request, you can go ahead and make that change up here, make a change to the commission percent or the commission amount, um, and then just go ahead and save your changes. So we did the first section, and now the second part is the agent section down here. So it'll automatically default to having you, whoever created this commission request here, um, and you can go ahead and edit the payment details. So it'll automatically have your name here. It'll automatically default to one unit and the gross commission. This will calculate out the royal, <coughs> excuse me, the royalty and the company dollar that you are contributing. Um, this is for the KW Cares, Kids Can and Bold Scholarship. You can add those there. And then if you go to the bottom, you'll see this extra payment options. So this section is what you're gonna use when you have um, a referral, like an outside referral, or if you're in productivity coaching, and you need to add Jen Henry to your commission request, you're going to use the add item. So let's just add an item here. It asks you what item you want to use. Um, let's go with an outside referral. <clears throat> and so then it's going to ask you a bunch of information about the referral. So it's going to ask you the percent. That's the first thing, 25%. It's going to ask you for the tax ID. Um, if you have it, because maybe they sent you their W-9, that's great. You can add the tax ID into the system. If you don't have the tax ID, that's fine. You guys can just put in a fake tax ID. Um, for that, we ask that you use 01234567 um, Don't use consecutive numbers, like um, don't use like 00000 or 99999 because the system will flag that as being fake and it'll bounce it back. But if you put in 01234567 it thinks it's a real number and it will accept it. Um, and that's fine, like I said, to use a fake tax ID. Um, then it's going to ask for you know the broker's name, the broker company name, maybe it's I don't know. It is Smith. And have you search for their brokerage address and add in their phone number. 
email is not required, but if you do have the email for them, that's great. The more information you can provide, the better for us in case we have to get in contact with this, this brokerage for any reason. Um, but once you've done that, you can go ahead and click add. And now if you look here, it says outside referral, how much they're getting. And if you needed to edit this or remove this, you can use the pencil to edit or the little circle with the minus to remove that outside referral. If it was an error or, or anything like that. And let's say I'm also in productivity coaching. So in order to add PC to this, go back here and you want to choose a deduction. That's how you're going to enter in um, productivity coaching if you are part of that. Let me see. All right. So the amount, um, the standard is the 10%. You were getting 12,500, so it would be 1,250. Again, it's going to ask for tax ID, although I don't think this is required on this one. But again, you can always just use a dummy tax ID, 01234567, what we encourage everybody to use. Description, just go to PC, to Jim Henry, 777 Summer Street. In there. And so now it added a deduction underneath the, um, the donations here. It says PC and it says how much is supposed to be received. So we can go ahead and save the changes. And then it updated the information here. You will have a feed here of how much um, company dollar and royalty you contributed as well as how close you are to your cap for each. Um, I clearly have not contributed anything. So I'm at 0%. Um, the yellow amount shows um, how far you are with this transaction. Um, I don't remember the color for what you already have here, but it'll give you kind of a running total. Um, and it'll say 100% once you've capped on royalty, 100% once you've capped on your company dollar as well. So it gives you a way to sort of keep track of how close you are to capping. Um, if you were doing this with um, another agent in the office, um, you were on the same side, you were you know, co-listing this with somebody, or you were, you're on a team and you need to add in uh, either another agent or the Rainmaker. Um, if you're adding in another agent from our office, you're going to use the add another agent button, which is right here next to the word payment. And it's going to search for an agent from our office. Let's see. You can put in how many units they're supposed to get. You know, maybe you're, you're splitting it in half with them. Their donations, any deductions that may apply to them. Um, you know, if you were doing an outside referral, you could put the referral um, on, you should put the referral on each person um, that's, that's in the transaction. Um, same thing with, you know, productivity coaching. You can add items here and not for the sake of time. So I'm going to do that. And you can already see it's given me an error here. Excess agent commission, remaining unit balance 0.5. That's because I left myself as one unit and also gave Danny one unit. So I'm just going to change this 0.5. Update the commission. And you can save the changes. All right. Next thing you're going to need to do is add the co-broker. So to the right of add another agent, there's add a co-broker payment. It's going to ask for pretty similar information to you know, the referral information that it asked for. Um, the commission percent and amount. Um, 
if you're the listing agent, you're going to know how much the buyer's agents are going to receive. If you are the buyer agent, you probably don't know how much the listing agent has received. It still says this is required. You can just put in, um, you know, whatever number, maybe match whatever you were getting. Um, the amount isn't so important as knowing who the co-broker is. It's just like on the green sheet, we had a required field for the co-broker. It's the same thing here. Again, it's going to ask for a tax ID. Using a dummy tax ID is fine. Um, if you happen to have a W-9 for the co-broker, not sure why you would, um, you can enter their tax information. GGTDIM. Company name is going to be sure, AXP. Uh, company name and pay to are, you can put the, the same thing. It depends on whether or not they have a DBA that they're running under. Um, but for, for the purposes of this, you don't really need to know the specifics. So you can just put in the same thing twice. Um, and this is where you would put the agent. Um, so John Doe is the agent um, who is on the buy side of this transaction. And it's going to ask for their address. Right. Again, email is not required. If you do have the email for the co broker, you can add it. If not, that's fine. Um, save the changes. Now, uh, we are asking that everybody put the co broker information in, regardless of what. Kind of transaction that you're doing. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing a listing, whether you're representing a buyer, whether you're representing a landlord, tenant, um, always put the co-broker information in. Um, we will return your permission request if you don't have it in. If you are, um, if this is you know, dual or designated agency, just put in Keller Williams as the co-broker, but make sure you still put it in the system so that we can see it. Um, even if it's you on both sides in your dual agency, um, you're still going to want to put it in here. Um, okay, so that's there, that's there. Good. And so the last thing, at least for the Stanford office, that we ask is where it says add a note on the right hand side. You're going to want to click that. And that's where we want you to add the seller's attorney information. We always used to ask for it on the green sheet. Um, so as long as you're not doing a rental, you should be putting the seller's attorney information or whoever needs to get billed on this transaction. I know sometimes with foreclosures, it's a little different. Um, but whoever should be being billed, you should be putting the name, uh, address, email, and phone number. You don't need to put a fax number. Nobody faxes anymore, unless that's how they want their invoice. Um, so you can just add the seller's attorney information here. Arnowitz, et cetera, et cetera. You can add everything here and then just save the changes. You can also put any other notes that you might want us to know. It's the same thing like on the green sheet where there was a note section. Um, just because there is no section allotted for seller's attorney, that's why we're asking you to put that information here. So once you're done, you can save changes. Um, just a note for you guys. Um, if I do ask you to put in the seller's attorney in the note section, it is this section here and not this tab up here. I know a lot of people, um, I've said to put it in the notes section and they put it in this notes tab here. Uh, I can't see these notes. These are notes for you guys and, and you know, you and your assignees on this, but the MCA department cannot see that. So make sure if I ask you to put something in the notes section that you are just putting it in this area down here. It said add a note, and here I can just edit the note there. And once you have everything done, you can go ahead and submit it. It's going to ask you again if you would like to donate. They're very persistent. So no, it's going to ask for each agent involved. So I put myself and I put Danny on here. So it's going to ask for each. And then we're going to apply it. And then it'll say your permission is under review by your MCA. And it's just waiting for your MCA to review it and approve it or turn it to you if there's any error with it. 
Um, so those are the basics of doing commissions. Now, if you, unlike the green sheet where the listing agent was the one to submit the green sheet for both sides of the transaction for the, um, you know, for the buyer and the listing agent, assuming it was in-house, um, commission should be submitted by everybody. So if you are the buyer's agent or the tenant's agent and the listing agent is in our office, you should still be submitting your own commission requests. And again, you should be putting in that case, <clears throat> excuse me, the co-broker would just be, you know, Keller Williams and the agent name would be whoever's on the other side. Uh, when it says agent for co-broker, if it's a team, you can put in, you know, AKG or Boxer Realty <clears throat> instead of just the individual agent. Um, but you will need to submit your own commission request, um, regardless of which side you're on. Um, so those are sort of the basics of doing a commission request. Does anybody have questions? I'm sure somebody has questions. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Ask me a question. Nobody? Does anybody so have a couple of questions? Yeah. Um, do you want this to go simultaneously with the documents or should this follow the documents? So you should generally do things in the order that tabs go. That's how I feel. So, you know, details be the first thing you fill out, put all your documents in, then do your offer, then do your commissions. Okay. One last question. Thank when is this going to launch? When are we supposed to start using this? You can do this right now if you want. Okay, in lieu of green sheets. Yep, in lieu of green sheets. So if you submit a commission request, you don't need to submit a green sheet. Thank you. And again, if, you're, if we're doing like dual agency, maybe you'll submit your commission request, but the, uh, the listing agents in our office, maybe the listing agent submitted a green sheet. So you may get a return notice from me saying, you know, green sheet was already submitted by the listing agent. In that case, you know, the listing agent did everything you don't need to, but as we move forward, more and more people will be doing commission requests. So you should just get into the habit of doing your own commission requests for all of your transactions. Um, I think it's easier than doing green sheets. I think it leaves, um, it asks for less information. Um, it's not as long and drawn out as the green sheet was. And then it's also right here with your documents. So you don't have to go to two different places. You don't have to go to MyKW to do your green sheet and go to command to put your documents in. It's all in one spot. Um, One last thing. I have yeah. to put the information in the offers tab. I can't bypass that tab, right? No, you can't bypass the offers tab. Um, you have to put it in. Again, it asks for very little information. Um, parties involved, agents, sales price, and like the finances. How much is being put down in cash versus being financed. Um, that's pretty much all the required fields on that. Um, if you're doing a rental, uh, I'm pretty sure there is no offers tab. It just goes straight to the commissions tab. Um, so if you don't see the offers tab, that means you don't have to fill out. Um, you can just go straight to commissions. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other questions? About a good half hour before, you know, two o'clock before the class would end. So Sam, are there areas where in your experience people usually do something wrong that we could avoid now? So the biggest thing is, uh, the two biggest things are the adding in the co-broker and adding in the seller's attorney information because neither of those are mandatory or marked as mandatory by um, command or by the commissions. So many people don't put in the co-broker or they don't put in the seller's attorney information in the notes section, in which case uh, we will return the opportunity to you and ask that you add those details to your requests. Those are, I would say 98% of returned commission requests are due to one or both of those, seller's attorney or the co-broker. And with the seller attorney, you need the name, the phone number, address yes. too? Or? Yeah, so put in the name, the address, the phone number, and the email. Okay. Uh, same information that we asked for on the green sheet. The green sheet also asked for fax number. Again, no faxes anymore. 
Um, so you don't need to put a fax number in, but we need that information. You know, if this is something we're releasing a binder, we want to know what the address is so we can mail it. If we are not releasing a binder, we need to know what the email is so that we can just email on the invoice. And it's always good to have the phone number just in case we have to reach out to the attorney if there's any sort of discrepancies or anything. Um, it's always just good information to have. Um, if you don't know some of the information, put in as much information as you have. Sam, one more question. Yep. Can can you uh, edit after you've submitted it to the MCA, or do you is that pretty much? So no. So once you click submit and it says that you are sorry, see these faces, um, that it's waiting for review. Uh, yeah, commission is under review by your MCA. You can't make changes to that. If you do, maybe you realize you forgot to do something. Just reach out to me or Lisa, probably me. Um, that you know, you just need a return. I've had agents do that. They submit it and then they're like, oh crap, I forgot to do this. And they send me a text message saying, can you just you know, return this to me? Sure, I'll look it up and I'll just open it back up for you to, um, to make changes to it. Um, but there's no way for you to, to, to make edits to it while it's in this submit stage. Everything is kind of grayed out here. It doesn't want you to do anything. Um, the, one of the current downsides, I should say, to um, the commission, um, which I know they're working on changing, is that once you've submitted a commission and it's been accepted and approved by your MCA, there's no way to do a second commission request for a given opportunity. So maybe you submitted it, everything's going fine, all of a sudden a client loses their job, the whole deal falls apart, um, and now especially if it's your listing, you have all these done listing documents, it's got the same address, doesn't matter. You can't submit a second commission request. This commission request is kind of stuck in there. Your options are either to create a brand new opportunity, um, and you can mark this one as a lost opportunity because this particular deal is sort of a lost opportunity with that particular buyer. Um, or if you don't want to go through all that hassle, you can submit a green sheet um, because you can submit as many green sheets as you want. So um, you can make that choice on what you want to do. Um, that, that's the only real downside to commissions, which I know they're working on fixing to make commissions kind of its own separate thing where you can submit more than one commission request if need be. Anybody else? Any questions on commissions or opportunities or anything of that nature? Shocked. Does everybody did everybody understand it? Everybody thinks they they're they're good with it. It's not. I don't think it's too difficult. So I I'm, I'm glad to see a lot of people don't have questions. That makes me know that it is a little bit easier. It's not a terrible teacher. Um, uh, let's say if uh, I give the referral to one of the agent. So do I have to do any kind of paperwork in that case? So if you refer a client to another agent. Uh, yeah. Um, outside of our office, I'm assuming you mean, right? Or not, not internal. Let's say internal. Yeah. So internal. If, it's, if it's if it's an internal one, then you still don't need to do any. You can, yeah, you don't need to do anything if it's internal. They would put you um, on their commission request as as a referral, basically. Okay, and um, so, and if it's outside of referral, the only thing that you need to do is create an opportunity. Um, for that referral, just put whoever the client was in as your contact and then um, upload your referral form. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do a green sheet. You don't have to do a commission request. All we need is your referral form. Or if you did a referral through command, um, you can just kind of screenshot your, um, your referral in command and upload that to your opportunity. You just need some sort of information in regards to the referral, preferably something, you know, in writing. We always want to make sure that you know the other side is going to pay out. Um, that's why we ask for the referral forms. Um, make sure we have something in writing from the other brokerage saying they agreed to pay 25% to us. Um, that way, if they decide to go back later and say, hey, you never referred this, you can show them the form and say, hey, you and your brokerage signed this form. You owe me money. Um, but as a referral, that's all you really need to put in is the referral form for outside referral. OK, can, can you show that how I, we can do that? 
So you would just create an opportunity um, like this opportunity. So I always say whatever client you refer, if that client was selling a property, um, create a listing opportunity. If that client that you refer is buying um, a property, then just upload them as a buyer opportunity. And then when you're in documents, There's a spot for, it says Keller Williams referral form, whatever referral form you have, just upload that here. Okay. And that's all you have to do. It's going to have all these other options. You don't need to do them for, for a client that you refer to somebody else. You don't need to put in any of this stuff, just the referral form. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, does referral have any expiration date? Uh, let's say if I refer to someone to different state uh, and if they are taking like a long time, like two, three months to decide. Um, so is there any expiration date for that? That I know of. I don't think there's a, uh, an expiration date on referrals. It's just whether or not that client actually does go ahead and buy or sell a property. You know, okay. if, if they decide that they're not going to buy and they're just going to stay where they are or something like that then obviously you don't get a referral fee. I think that's the only real limitation on it is making sure that the transaction closes. Okay. Uh, Sam, um, how long, how much time in advance do you have to uh, put the commission information? Usually when I get the commitment letter in the case of a buyer, in case of purchase, I put the information about the commission because you don't know if it's still at that point the buyer is going to get the approval for the mortgage. So, but yep, sorry. It, it's okay. So, last week or two weeks ago, we received the email from the MCA saying that send all the information about commissions closing in December and even November in advance. But you know, sometimes you don't receive the commitment letter or the approval two weeks before the closing. So what the office policy is, is that um, your documents, your compliance, and your commissions or green sheet should be submitted within three days of an accepted offer. Three days? Within three days of an accepted okay. offer. Okay. Yes. So you may not quite have the contract up yet, um, but as long as there's agreement between the two parties, um, that you know they're gonna buy, sell, slash, sell the property. Um, that's generally when you should be entering in the information. Oh, uh, yes, okay. And so if, if information changes after you've already submitted your commission request, just let um, just let me or Lisa know, or if you're in Ridgefield, let Deb Linky know that um, your you know something changed, a closing date changed, a price changed something like that, and we can make the changes on the back end. Once it's approved, the commission request, just like a green sheet, you can't make edits to it. Okay. So you'll just have to let us know that there was a change. Sales price went up, sales price went down, closing day got postponed or moved forward. Um, but you should definitely always be making sure that you are letting your MCA department know of these changes. Um, so you know, if something gets pushed back, you know, closing date, even if it's just a week, just shoot an email to your, to your MCA or you know, to me, your assistant MCA saying, hey, one, two, three, Broad Street, you know, closing date moved to November 15th instead of November 5th. That's fine. That way we can update the system. Um, because especially um, towards the end of the month, we're trying to figure out what's, you know, what's actually closing in this month versus in next month. Um, Sometimes we don't know things have fallen apart. Sometimes we don't know things have moved up by three weeks and I haven't sent an invoice because I thought it was closing, you know, at the end of November and now it's closing November 2nd. So just make sure when you find out that something changes that you let the, uh, the MCA department know that way we can update it and make sure everything stays on track on our end as well. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. I suppose if no one has any other questions, I will go ahead and end the call. Um, you guys can always reach out to me if you need help with commission requests or you know anything else. Um,
you guys mostly, I think all of you know my email and phone number, but I will put it in the chat real quick. Email, cell number. There, like I said, reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and uh, end this call. Have a great day, everybody. And I'm sure I will see you all soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.